All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jamie, and that is Jamie over there, my wife. Right, Jamie? Right. <laughs> Exciting. Anyway, uh, so yesterday we went and got this, and this is on funny because I've actually taken the lid off and stuff, but uh, it is a beehive, a horizontal hive. Uh, I think this is on backwards because we had to take it apart. But there's all the pieces and that we'll put together because we put it in this car. <laughs> Believe it or not, this thing fit in the back of that car. It was tight, but uh, we got it to work. So anyway, today uh, we're gonna get it painted up. Uh, we'll only show you a bit of that because it's not that exciting, but we're gonna get it painted because uh, tomorrow we have to go up and pick up the uh, the nuke, uh, which is nucleus of bees. So. And then tomorrow we'll put that in there. I'm not sure if that'll be in this video, the same video or not, but uh, either way, I'm gonna get this all painted up and then I'm gonna get it moved and I have to move it. I think I'm going to put it back there, way back there. You don't want dark colors or red color. Or red because it's apparently they see it like black or something. So that's not a good thing for them. And then um, darker colors obviously attract heat, so we don't want that. So anyway, all light colors. Jamie's going for yellow, light yellow, or orangey yellow, and uh, light bluish or green. Uh, and then I chose this. <laughs> so... Uh, I got to choose this one, and because uh, by next year we'll probably get more, so Jamie gets to choose the next one after that. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> nah, that's not bad. I think it'll be nice, actually. Mm -hmm. Might take two coats, so. Probably. Yeah. So it's kind of important that you paint these, especially this design, at least, anyway. And I even think the regular uh, stackable hives, I forgot what they call them, all the terminology right now. But uh, even those you should paint. Makes them last so much longer. We don't get tons of rain here, but we get, you know, the snow sits on well, them. Well, also stuff. they should, um, you want the bee to be able to identify its own hive. Yeah, go it's good for identification, yeah. Yeah. So they remember, especially when right now it's not going to matter because we have the one hive, but we're going to have more. So this way they know which hive is theirs. And then um, you can also paint designs on them as well, but we didn't go that route. I may put like a sticker or something on it one day, but for now, it's just going to be painted. Okay, so I think I found a good spot because I was thinking of putting them over here. Because uh, we're going to, like I said, we're going to might have even 10, 15 hives here eventually. Because you got to remember, there's acreage that way, there's a marsh over here. There's a farmland over there, farmland over there. And I've got this big field. Uh, the neighbors are there, but they're mostly tree too. And like I said, uh, we got this old bushes around here. So we can have quite a few hives apparently, for as far as we've done our research so far. Uh, we can have a lot of hives on our property just in this one location so so this area usually i remember gets really thick of grass because it stays really moist so i don't want to put hive to put the hives in here even though it's a nice little dip you know and it block the wind maybe a bit from them for them uh during like stormy times so i don't have to worry so much about the hive blown over uh but i think this actually area is better first of all as this is fairly flat so we can put hives all the way down here and I can put my electric fence up they have uh, an area that's going to grow up behind them which is going to be bushy and uh, eventually we may, may leave all this to grow there like this too because look at all these nice wild flowers and stuff right so this is kind of an awesome spot it's relatively level and I can put my electric fence up and it's a good spot for the solar panel on the electric fence charger so I think this is actually a good spot and it stays dry I think this is it I think this is where we're going to put it so let me unload all my stuff, and I have to go back and get some gravel, uh, possibly, because it's probably not going to be super level. So I'm going to put some gravel underneath the blocks I got, because we got uh, a stand, right? Uh, the horizontal hive, not the vertical ones. Uh, you should put those on something anyway, too. But uh, So we're going to put each leg, we'll stand on one of these.
Well, that's hot today. Um, okay, so I got this level. Oh, kind of actually, I gotta level the back a little bit more, but pretty much the height I want. And it's gonna level this brick so it's flat, and then do the same to all of them, and then make sure they're level this way and all that stuff. It might take a while, so I'll come back after I'm done. Not the safest way to move people around, especially when I'm not even holding the wheel. <laughs> Okay, so this is the inside. We haven't shown that yet. Uh, it's all in pieces at the moment. And we don't, we don't have all the frames in here yet. We bought some frames from the other guy, and I'll show you what we're going to do with those. Yeah, there's all the inside. Pretty nice. So anyway, that's the, that's the guy. <laughs> You're in the local area. <laughs> I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you are not. But <laughs> We're going to get the, the uh, frames cut and uh, get all this stuff out first. It's a pretty nice uh, setup here. It's a double deep. Uh, sorry if I don't know all the terminology yet. I'll, uh, as we go along, I'll try to use that more often. But this is a horizontal hive and it's double deep. So, and as you can see, you can slide frames down the sides and slide them over, in and out and stuff. So, um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the current frames. Uh, I can order full size frames that go double deep. Uh, online and stuff, but they're quite a bit more expensive. So this is a solution the guy told me because they're readily available anywhere here. We can get them like right at the local shop, um, hardware store has these. So it's better to use these than than the full full length frames for that reason. These are the frames that the guy sold us today. Uh, just regular size frames, and uh, they were three bucks each. Which isn't this isn't too bad, but uh, he did put the wax in that on them for us already. So. The beeswax so that will help with the, the bees accepting these and making their comb and all that on them uh it's supposed to help with that so anyway they've got two different colors he said the the black one he said the advantage of the black one is the larvae you can see the larvae easier over the white one so he goes it's not really a big deal but either way uh either color is fine um and then he also cut the holes in the edges or i don't know if it, they came like that or not but anyway there's holes in the edges so the bees can get in and out easier as well because uh, what we're going to do today, I'm going to use two black ones or two white ones for this, but is I'm going to put them together and then uh, we cut those off, the, off of one, one set, so it's like that. And then we put a piece of metal here and screw them together on both sides. So they're like that, you get a double frame out of it. And that will fit nicely in the double frame in there. So when you pull them out, it's all one big frame instead of multiple frames. Now for the honey, we're not going to do that for the honey frames <laughs> we're not going to do that because um for the machine extractor where you put these in and extract the honey out of them if you had the double ones you got to get special extractors and stuff we don't want to do all that so anyway this will be for the brood net we're going to connect them together so that's the theory anyway okay so on one of these i'm going to try to cut this off I and mean, again you gotta be careful doing this stuff but we'll uh hopefully can do it no problem There. 
And yes, I should be wearing eye protection. But I am not. Yes. Now, remember, <laughs> we're amateurs. We don't know really much about this stuff. Just what we've learned from the people we've talked to, videos online and that, obviously. But this was suggested to do this uh, by the guy we bought the high from. So they seem to know what they're doing. And uh, I'll follow their lead. Because, like I said, we don't know very much. And technically, uh, the ones in the uh, nuke box, there's five frames in there. Technically, we could do that, the same process with them. Even when they got the, the bees on them, they just shake the bees off. But we're not going to do that today because we're new. And, uh, and uh, we want to make sure they get their home set up first before we worry about, worry about it. But eventually, I want to connect their, high, their uh, frames just like this as well. They're not even bees swarming us. No, they're flies. Those are bees kill flies. That'd be nice. I don't think so though. Okay, so don't do it too tight. We need to let our uh, Bruce and Pearl come over here. Yeah, Bruce and Pearl will get the flies. Okay, so these are done enough, as you can see. Nice and sturdy, so not flopping around all over the place. Now I am a little concerned because these, I don't know if the guy designed this or not, but these are extremely close to falling in on the edges, but whatever. Uh, we'll find out if we have to do something later on, we will, but it uh, should be okay, ant. Okay, so it was a bit of a puzzle to figure out, but uh, all these little extra different sizes are for different gaps. So, so for example, I should have my little tool to pull this out, but um, that's the insulation thing I'm just gonna store in there for, it's for winter, but whatever. Uh, see, these are dividers, right? Okay, so these are dividers. You can divide it any way you want. There's two dividers. Well, one is it goes right to the bottom there. This one will not go to the bottom, but it does in this one particular spot. Or uh, I think there's a spot over here it can go to. But this divider goes right to the wire mesh down there. I, I don't know if you can see that or not. But, uh, so you'd use that in between. And then, uh, so if you want, pretend this is the hive. It goes here, and then your divider. And these, all these little bits here, or to fit in, and you got your things obviously, to fit in between. So you can fill the gaps. It's actually kind of amazing how they measured all this so they have different sizes that fill these gaps. And then these are extra, I'm assuming. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what these are, all extras, which I'll figure out at another time. Uh, we can also store them at the end until this gets full. It's also got a tool holder up here, which is kind of neat. Yeah, so anyway, that's the gist of it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna research before we do this, but I'm assuming I'd leave the vent open because of heat, right? So you want to vent out the heat. They want, you don't want them getting too hot, so they would all be in there. And before I forget, one other thing we forgot to show you is that these are all insulated. These uh, hives. So there's insulation. This is obviously wood, but there's insulation as thick as that down here because these are thin little boards. But insul uh, foam insulation through there, and then in the winter. You put this on. Apparently you need a burlap sack or something inside, or burlap or something that goes up on the bottom and up the sides. I'm not sure why. We'll research that part. But uh, so anyway, this goes in here. Obviously not in the summer. And you try to fill it in nicely. What is it made of, wool? Lamb's wool. This is lamb's wool actually here. And then what you do is you, you close it up, right? So, because we get extremely cold weather here in the winter. And uh, it'll help with moisture and everything. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. This guy, uh, well, he didn't think of it. This actually, um, it's an old, uh, what is it, old um, way of doing things. But it's supposed to be more efficient in the long run. And you don't have to lift 200 pound boxes and honey and stuff. So it's kind of handy. Now there is one other thing I, uh, I think I'm gonna add to this hive. Now this seems to latch down over the edge a bit. But if a good wind comes, see that? I do not want this lid blowing over and taking the whole thing with it. So I am gonna get some latches to, to latch on, to hold the lid down. Plus if a bear gets past our electric fence, which if he does that and he's determined he's gonna get in anyway, but it just helps with some preventative stuff, right? So anyway, we're gonna get that latched up. I might do the sides, I don't know, I'll figure out a good way to do that. Cause I've seen a few of them on, on online that have, or not online, but on videos, that have the latches to lock them down so the lid can't be opened easy. All right guys, well, thanks for watching and uh, 
we'll have a lot more bee stuff over the uh, coming months here. Uh, I'm still going back and forth to my business, which I still haven't been able to deal with. So uh, I won't be around as, that much over the summer, but uh, when I am here, I will be recording stuff. So we'll have updates on the bees, the pigs, the birds, the chickens, uh, and all that stuff as we go along, and hopefully some more stuff in the summer. But if I'm gone most of the time, I won't be able to uh, do the other things we planned. Um, so I'm hoping, uh, hoping I can get around to that. Anyway, uh, please stay tuned for the trail cam footage at the end. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, and share, and I will see you next time. Thanks again.